I am from uh, Monterey Tech University, so maybe you don't know about it. So I'm going to show you a little bit about our uh, 15 years of uh, doing mistakes and learning from that in virtual education. So I'm going to show you three different models we are using for our virtual university. Since we have different public, different participants, and different students, we have to design different models for that. So I'm going to present the three of them with a brief, a brief introduction about the university. We are spread all around Mexico in 33 campuses. This is Mexico. So this is all the campus. And here is Monterey. As you see, the United States is here. So we are more close to the United States than to Mexico City. So you can see all the campuses. And you can start imagine why we needed a virtual university, since we are different uh, campuses and different places. And we have to be, at the same time, working as a system. So we needed something to uh, get integrated, the, the system. And uh, we also have uh, sites in Latin America. And this is the way we get there, by satellite. So this is the places where we, are, we have students at this moment. Why we start with the virtual university? There was two reasons. The first was to develop the faculty. Since we need to have a master degree for the professors who were teaching in undergraduate programs, uh, it was cheap for us to get into the virtual programs than to get all professors together and give them the, PH, the, the master degree or the PhD. And the second reason is that we have some very good professors in some regions, and we wanted that professors to share their classes to the whole country. So we needed in, to do this in a virtual system. These are the numbers for the virtual programs for the last year. So graduate programs, we have 5,000 students. Undergraduate programs, we have 18. For continuing education, we have 44,000 students. And for other programs, we have 11,000 students. So that's a total of 80,000 students or participants in virtual programs for last year. In, uh, so at this moment, we have almost the same. But uh, we think we are going to have a growth of about 5% or 10%. We combinate uh, technologies satellite or internet for our programs. So as you can see, we have programs for public officials. Since they don't have connection to internet, we get them by satellite. For undergraduate uh, students, we combine both internet and satellite. Our master's degrees in management are both internet and satellites. Our engineering programs are mostly by internet, and in some we use satellites. And the masters in education are almost all in internet. And plus that, we have programs full on internet, which are this. Then we have a, a digital library, which supports all the programs. And this is all the technologies around our courses. And this is very important to say that when we're talking about one course, it's not just about the platform delivery, but all the systems that support that course. Then we have systems to support the management of education. We have systems and programs that help the faculty for teaching. And then we have the system that helps the students and the learning. What I'm talking about is that we have a system the learning content management system, which is a depository of all the content of the courses. So we keep them so we can use for different purpose. The student is in the center. So this is how we combine the technologies to get the students all the materials and help by the tutor. And of course, to give them all the supportive uh, register, academic management information, and other things he might need. So what this was the introduction. So I'm going to focus now on the first model, the model for 
formal education, which means graduate programs and undergraduate programs. These are what I mean. The participants are between 26 and 33 years old. This is the profile. We have uh, 5,000 uh, students in these programs. And these are our programs, all this full internet management, internet technology, e-commerce, quality and productivity, master in Latin American manager, master in humanistic, master in education, and we have a one PhD. We have two moments in the design of a course. When we design the course and when we deliver the course. When we design the course, there is a professor who is the expert in a content area. This professor worked together with a, a team. The team is integrated by a content expert, instructional designer, graphic designer, web programmer, and a course director that works as a project manager. These worked together for about eight weeks to design the course. And it's important to, to say here that what we want from the professor is not uh, just lecturing, but to develop the environment of the course, to give, to give all the content and to give all the activities for the participants to learn. What's happened after that? We have tutors, and tutors are different from the professor who designed the course. And this is very important for us for the reason that in some courses we have more than 300 students. So one professor, it's impossible for him to handle this number. So we need to divide the course in several courses, and that's why we need tutors. But also, The, the professor who designed the course is invited to participate do, during the delivery as a professor who is supervising the process. And here are the students. So you can see in these areas, the, the students have more time to contact the tutor, and they have a few time to contact the professor. What we have here, is a relationship between professors and tutors. The tutor go with the professor to ask for advice. Then we have the relationship between the students and how the tutor follow this. And from that, you can see three different areas of learning in the course. First, you can see this. There is an area where the students don't get in touch with the tutor. This area is for self-directed learning in a course. There is the second area, this one, which is all the activities that need feedback from tutor. And then you have this third area, which is the area where the students get in touch with the expert. Of course, if you ask a student, the students would say that he wants more time with the professor who designed the, the course. The thing is that it's not possible in most of the, of the courses because of the number of the students. So this is one of the models for uh, formal education. The second model is for continuing education. Now, we have a different profile of participants. This program are directed towards companies that has employees located mainly in different geographical areas and have a strong need for accessible and uniform training. These are the areas, management, productivity, sales, accounting and finance, computing, language, sustainable development, health and education. And these are the numbers of students we have in the last year. What is important here is that for continuing education, we don't have professors. Because most of the courses are designed by different professors, not just one, but different experts. 
And some of the courses I designed by experts from companies. And most of these pro uh, experts don't have experience teaching. So that's why they are not teaching, but we get from them all the knowledge in the content. What is important to say here is that when we are talking about continuing education, we are not talking about one course, but we are talking about four elements before going with the course. The first is the strategy that the company is going to set to run the course. Then is the technology. Sometimes we have a course who has a lot of things on it, and when the course goes to the company, it cannot run because it's too heavy. So we can to redesign the course to, have, uh, to be more light. Then we have, of course, the course. And then we have all the activities to follow up and improvement of the course. So at the beginning, as I told you, we have made a lot of mistakes. And when we start with continuing education, we were just delivering courses without paying attention to all these three more elements. But now when we work with the companies, we start with the strategies. And after that, we start with the course. For our continuing education, we combine satellites and internet because some employees don't have access to internet. So what we do is we send the course by satellite and it's easier for them to have a room in the company than to have access to computer for everyone. So we combine independent on the, on the companies. What are different, this model from the other, is, is that these uh, courses are focused on company objectives. The selection of the teacher, the teaching channel that meets the company objectives is the best way. When we have these programs in satellite, we focus on Latin American participants. And this is very important to say here. Latin American schools are very traditional. And what, what this means is that we depend on professors. And from that, we are not responsible for self-study. So we need to develop this before going online. 